Greetings and welcome to another African math tutorial. This is our third lesson and today we're going to be using the Dahuti. Please run and get your Dahuti and if you do not have a Dahuti, please go to our website at AfricanMath.com and purchase one. And if you'd like to participate today and you don't have a Dahuti, run and get an egg carton or draw out this Dahuti on a piece of paper and use bees and coins to hold you until then. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to all of our supporters and there's a lot of energy has been stimulated for African math and we really appreciate your support. Diving right in our previous lesson, we discussed converting quantities into groups, recognizable groups, and converting recognizable groups into symbols. Again, when you count by one, those quantities are considered chaos. So there's a process with African math where you, you initiate chaos quantities into the abacus order. So we're looking at the number five. This is a symbol that represents five that we were taught in school, but it has no significance. So on the Dahuti, this is the quantity of five. Now, why is that five? I'm going to show you a very important process that you need to remember and you need to practice every day where you will see the relationship between the number five, meaning the quantity of five, and our symbol of five. Unfortunately for the five that we were taught in school, this five, you don't really see how it's re relative to the quantity of five. But I'm about to show you how the Dahuti five, the African Abacus five, has a very intimate relationship with the symbol of five. And the way you do that is you always have to go to the first cup, you know, call, it, call it the golden cup, or some people like to call it the magic cup. This is where the transformation from quantity into the chaos quantity and the abacus order takes place. It's through an initiation method. So first thing I need you to do is take, since we're dealing with the number five, I'd like you to take five beads and put it in the first cup. All right, and the way you initiate a chaos quantity into the abacus order is through a process called clear carry. Anytime you have more than one bead in a cup at a time, you have to reduce the cup to one or none, meaning it has one bead or no beads at all, through a process called clear, where you clear one bead to the storage, carry. You carry a bead to the next cup. Okay, this is very important. Okay, so you, the first cup still has more than one bead in it. So you have to continue the process. Clear. Carry. Okay. Now we have one bead in the first cup. And we have two beads in the second cup. The first cup is finished. You don't need to do anything else to it. We've reduced it to one or none. Now we need to continue the process on to where it applies. And it applies here in the second cup where we have two beads. And then we have to reduce those to one or none with a process called, you're correct, clear, carry. Now if you check the value of the cups, which we know is, um, which we know is um, one and four. We'll, we'll find out that we've initiated our chaos quantity into the abacus order. If you if you don't understand what we just did, or if you don't understand the current cup values, please go back to previous lessons so you can thoroughly understand. Okay. And so let's have fun. Let's do this again. This works with any quantity. So you can put any quantity in that first cup and then reduce it 
to the, uh, the abacus order through the clear carry process. Now let's try a very important number. Let's try the number seven. Okay, here we go. All right. Do you have seven beads in your Dehuti? I hope you do. And let's begin the process, starting with the first cup, of course. Clear. Carry. Clear. Carry. Clear. Carry. Now we've reduced this first cup to one. We have three beads in the second cup. We want to clear one to the storage, carry one to the next cup. And this symbol represents the quantity of seven. It has a very intimate connection between that quantity uh, and they're eternally connected. So what our ancestors found out is that you're very efficient if you can take a quantity of seven and then represent it using place and beads, an invisible place and a tangible bead to reduce that quantity of seven to a symbol that's represented by three beads. It's, very, it's much more efficient. Um, so here we have seven. If we were to remove two, then the symbol automatically becomes five. And you saw us earlier initiate the chaos quantity of five into the abacus order of five so hopefully this looks familiar to you and that's the key with the african abacus is to to recognize the symbols just as fast as you recognize the symbols that are learned in the afro-numeric numbers where we learn symbols like like this so it's important to recognize just as fast and readily symbols like that if you have any questions please feel free to contact us at africanmath.com please follow us on facebook we also have a twitter account so feel free to follow us on twitter and we really enjoy comments so feel free to Send all of your questions to us and like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks again. We hope to hear from you soon.